And there's another little bush there. So we just need to check that. And that bush is a little bit worn. So it might pay to replace that bush there. You can also see that this hub's pretty dark, so that clutch pack's actually burnt out in there. Now, this is two clutch packs. You've got your three, four clutch pack there, and you've got your reverse clutch pack. So we're going to just do one by one. You can see there's some pretty pretty bad hot spots on that on the steel clutch plates and over here. So it has been working pretty hard. Especially that middle one. Um, it's only got two clutch plates in this clutch pack, so and you've got your cushion spring there. And we just checked that that diaphragm spring isn't broken. Um, and we'll probably replace this. Um, now, two, two reasons why that can burn. Either the seal on the piston is leaking, or the rings that are applying, uh, where, where it applies that pressure, um, they're leaking. So you want to make sure that the where the rings sit in there uh, is okay. It hasn't sort of worn a groove or anything in there. Okay, I've knocked out the bush with the driver. And I've polished up this where the band runs here. Okay, start off with the cushion spring, steel, friction, steel, friction, and the cushion plate. I've got the 3-4 clutch there. You can see that one's thoroughly burnt out. Friction plates are uh, metal to metal. And also this hub looks like it'll need replacing. You can see in here you can see those splines are thoroughly worn right down. So that clutch hub or clutch is uh, clutch drum is actually buggered. Okay, we've got another drum, and it's got another uh, molded piston there. I've just soaked all these. Um, these are actually one-sided clutch plates. So the teeth will be on, on the outside on one, and then on the inside on the other. Outside, inside. You can actually replace these with the standard clutch plates. It's the same thing where the, the plates with the outside teeth are usually the steel ones, and the inside teeth are the friction. So, just remember to soak them in oil before you put them in. OK, 
Okay. We'll just check the end float in there. Now in the 3-4 clutch, or also known as a direct clutch, um, the end float should be 40 to 50 thou, or 1 to 1.3 millimetres. So we've got about 1.2 I'd say. It's just sliding in there really tight. So I don't have a selective circle for one of these, but um, that's how you take up the end float. And the reverse clutch is the same. It's 40 to 50 thou or uh, 1 to 1.3 millimetres clearance. And this one's actually a little bit tighter. We've got 1 mil there. So if we go 0.9 of a mil, it just goes in. 0.9 will go in, 1 mil won't go in. So that one's good. Okay, so we can put it back together now. Sure you put your Torrington bearing in. I forgot to show you that, that bush in there. You can test it on here backwards. And don't forget that Torrington as well. got these longer tangs there so you've got to line those up there we go polish that up nicely checked everything check the splines check the bushes put another direct clutch in there and now we're ready to test this on the end cover we can do an air pressure test on it. Okay, we've thoroughly cleaned the end cover. Um, one thing to take note of, that's where the rings run wear out, uh, especially the smaller ones here, and, and then you can lose pressure there. Uh, also make sure that your bush is okay. And now we're just going to put some rings back in. Um, these these rings they're like uh, they're sort of probably closer to plastic material, so it's very important not to stretch them too far. Um, they can break on you, so just sort of wind them on slowly. Um, it'll go into snap into one groove, and then put it into the bottom groove, and then do the same with the other one. Okay, I've got the rings back in. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to just maybe stick them in there with a bit of uh, petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Just so if they're opened up too much, you're going to have a bit of a hard time putting the, the drums back on. Torrington bearings, just check them, make sure then there's no scratches or anything like that in it. Skid plate, you'll find um, it's worn on one side where where it was where the Torrington bearing was running. So I like to just flip it over. I'll just put a little bit of vaso on there. And I'll do the same on the Torrington bearing. And I might actually just stick those rings a little bit. I wouldn't want to cut them while 
I'm putting the drum back on. That'll just help hold them in a little bit better. Alright, now I can put the can put the drum back on. It's gone on a little bit tight. I'm just going to check, make sure I haven't damaged that ring. All looks good. Okay. We're just going to do an air pressure test over here. Now this one here will be the 3-4 clutch or the direct clutch. You can see that's applying nicely. <clears throat> and this one's your reverse clutch. A little bit hard to see on the camera, but you can see the um, the clutch pack under there on the outside edge. Making sure you got the Torrington bearings in the right spot. There we go. That clutch packs in nicely. So when we get this back together, we're going to do another air pressure test uh, where the valve body bolts on. And finally, we've got the band to put on. Here's the old band. Um, it's a little bit worn on the on the tips there, but I think what actually happens on these is these these lugs where the pins are. I don't know if you can see that, you can, they actually bend a little bit and that's probably what throws it out of uh, adjustment and there's the other side there so instead of having a fixed anchor bolt what we can do is make up one of these adjustment bolts we just make that up and then you can readjust that band. Uh, it's a little little bit easier than adjusting it with the anchor bolts. So just another option for you. Now I'm just soaking the new band in oil um, while I'm waiting for that. The band adjustment, if you do put an adjustable um, bolt in there, is 45 inch pound. Or five newton meter and back off one and a half turns now there is a procedure how to measure it if you if you've just got the old anchor bolt um, system but uh, I believe that it's a lot easier and probably better in the long run um, especially if you have someone readjusting that band from time to time and here I've got the ATSG manual that actually shows you how to um, readjust the band if you're using the uh, the anchor bolts um, what you do is you have this special tool here um, and you measure it with the verniers when you adjust it up um, to 5 newton meter or 40, 45 inch pound then back it out three and a half turns and then measure it um, if you are getting the adjustable um, bolt, uh, band adjustment bolt, um, it's actually 45 inch pound and back off one and a half turn. To get these bolts um, measured up properly you actually have to back it off three and a half turns. So if, if there's a little bit of confusion there. Um, if you do um, 
put one of the adjustable ones in there and it's uh, adjusted at three and a half turns back off it'll be way too loose those servos don't have a lot of um, travel through there um, but it's also important not to have the band too tight or too loose I'm just going to put the servo piston back in so we're just going to put a bit of petroleum jelly around there you can see I still haven't put the band in so we're going to put the servo piston in first and you make sure that you've got the spring on as well so I'm just going to smear a bit of Vaseline around that lip as well Don't forget your O-ring. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of Vaseline on there, just so it sticks in that groove a little bit better while I'm putting it back together. Okay, I've got the servo cover back on. Just replace the O-rings on the selector shaft, and we're going to push that back in. Always a good idea to put a little bit of Vaseline on there for a bit of oil. Okay, I've just I lined up the hole there and we've got the little roll pin. We just tap that back in. And just check to make sure that everything's operating okay. That nothing's fallen out of place. And that it's snapping back in the park. You might have to just rotate it, or the drum around just so it locates on those little lugs where the park locates. Okay, I'm just going to do an air pressure test on the servo. So... We just put a bit of air in there, and you can see it working there. Okay, we can put the band back in. Just like the clutch plates, remember to soak the band. Now when you put it all back together, you've got to just try and make sure that um, the clutch drum's just a little bit raised from the surface there, and that's where it sits. If it's gone up too high, um, it'll mean that one of your thrust washers or Torrington bearings or clutch packs haven't fallen in place. So important not to force anything. Um, it can also, when you're getting this end cover on, um, those rings, like I said, they're pretty, uh, pretty sort of um, hard material, so they can actually get caught, caught here on these little chamfers. So um, I like to put a bit of grease, water pump grease, on the ends just to hold them in place till I get it on. Okay, I've just put a light coat of uh, Celastic right around, and just putting it on the inside of the thread holes, because that's where you need it to be sealing, not on the outside of the thread holes. On that surface, we've just let it cure a little bit, and I've done the same on the cover, um, where these, I'm just going to scrape off that Celastic around where those O-rings are, just so we don't get um, 
a bead of celastic inside the that pressure port what can happen it, it can blow that because there's pressure going through there and over here well not not on that one actually because it's capped off on this one um, but yeah these two pressure ports here uh, for the clutch apply um, you don't want to get a bead of celastic in there being um, pushed coming away and being pushed into the clutch pack and here we've got uh, the locations for the air pressure tests for each of the clutch packs so we'll do that um, before we put the valve out body back on and quickly just showing uh, which clutch packs are applied in the different gears both uh, in drive and manually okay I've got 65 psi pressure on the regulator and we're just gonna you can hear it just snapping in there the band low and reverse direct clutch because there's a little slot on the hole there I'm just gonna put my finger there along with the plug and you can hear it hear the clutch applying so here we've got the forward clutch low and reverse band and the two clutch packs there you go everything's there um, this port here is for the servo release um, it'll actually because this one will be the apply that pushes it to apply this is the one to return it um, like I described earlier if that bore's worn then the pressure is not going to be enough to, to return it so can cause a few little problems now when we're putting the valve body back on it's important to align the selector linkage with this little bit here um, also make sure that the cable's not in the way you've got a locating pin or two locating pins that um, aligns it all in place um, and before we put that on make sure you have these two rubbers um, once for the low and reverse and once for the band so just make sure those rubbers have been replaced because they do flatten out now before we put the valve body on we're going to put the accumulator pistons in um, here's a diagram the one that's closer to the bell housing is the one two accumulator and the other one is the neutral drive accumulator and basically the the two springs that are basically the same length um, the inner and outer are the ones that go on the one two accumulator or close to the bell housing the two other ones uh, one will be a longer one and one will be a shorter one so that's how you tell the actual pistons accumulator pistons are the same so if you mix them up it doesn't matter but it's important to put the springs in the right spot okay and there I've got the accumulators in that's the one the one two and the neutral drive one so these ones which are basically the same length the inner and outer springs are the ones that go towards the, valve, uh, the bell housing so now we're just going to put the valve belt body back on and make sure we align that little selector linkage with the selector valve now all the bolts on the valve body are the same except for the two over here these two which are a bit longer and we've also made our little put our little bracket on just so I can actually press that, that part of the valve body a little bit further down there 
and we just tension it down to uh, 80 inch pound. And there we have it. We've put the valve body back on and the filter back on. Made this little bracket just so it presses down in between those two bolt holes. And now we've just got the pan to put back on. We'll put a magnet in the pan as well. And we're ready to install it. There we go, we've got it all back in. Just doing a final check. We're just going to just make sure all your steering linkages and everything are all back together. Now we're going to fill it up with oil and take for a run. And there we go. So we've done the full reco, just back from a test drive. It's all going good. Anyway, I hope that's shown uh, a few more details about how to do a repair on a FN4AEL. Thank you for watching.